We are on to prompt number 27, which is Raven. A while ago, I received some miniatures from Caleb from the channel Blandco, and he sent me one of these. And as you can see, it is a raven. So I want to get rid of that orc skull because, yeah, I don't really want that in my LS diorama. So I'm going to cover that up with some millipot epoxy stuff and make it into a rock. So the very simple thing that I'm going to do, I've mixed my millipot and I'm just going to cover the skull. So it looks like the raven is sitting on a rock. Normally I don't really mind, but you know, not for this one, definitely not an orc skull. Okay, now that it's all kind of smooth, I can now grab a little rock and texture it. I always have this little rock sitting in my stash, in my um, tools. Just gonna roll that over the surface. And there we have it. A raven sitting on a rock. Quick and easy. I still need to paint it, of course. Um, let's let this cure and that's what we'll do next. So I've just coated this entire raven and the base with a brush on primer. So the, um, the paint has something to grip onto. And I'm gonna paint the raven black, obviously, and then put a shiny top coat on, on top of him because of his shiny feathers. And the rock is gonna be a darker gray. I just went over the entire raven with a matte paint, so it's not less shiny right now, except for the beak, I left that shiny. Um, and now I'm gonna use this color shift metal Martian green, which goes from purple to green. So when you look at birds, they normally have that color shift element over their feathers. So I'm going to apply that now. This next prompt is Dormouse and I have sculpted the cat and I had this little figurine that I got a while ago from Blanco and it is a Dormouse and I think this is just perfect for what I want and size wise it's kind of kind of perfect so I'm gonna go with this figurine. Also if you haven't seen me sculpt Cheshire Cat go to a last week's video. Let's uh let's get painting. And here we have a Dormouse who is all finished painting. I have not much experience painting actual miniatures, so I hope I've done a good job for all your <laughs> um, miniature experts. Let's move on to the next prompt, which is hat. So what I want to make for this prompt is a Mad Hatter hat. When you look at the Mad Hatter hat, the base of the hat is as big as the top of the hat. So in order to make that in 112 scale, I think we should make it around four and a half centimeters, which would be 2.75. So if we make it five, that would be two and a half. 
which is a pretty large circle. So we'll see if we're gonna go with that. But it looks really big. So let's try for two. There we go. Just gonna cut these out now. So I've cut three circles. All of these are four centimeters. The inner circle, two of them is three centimeters. So I'm going to measure one inch and then another inch on top of that. And then what I will do is measure half a centimeter in and then one a half centimeter, like a half centimeter on top. So half a centimeter inside that inch and half a centimeter on top of that inch. And you'll soon see why, because those are going to be my glue strips. So that's the top. So this will now be what I will be measuring around, which needs to be three centimeters. And then I will cut strips out of this thing. First of all, I need to cut this thing out. This is the inside of my hat, which is that measurement exactly. So when I'm going to measure this thing, I can fit it inside there and it should fit inside the hat as well. And seeing that this is half a centimeter and that is half a centimeter, that should fold around quite nicely. So I've connected all the lines and now I'm going to slightly erase this part because that's not a part that I need to cut. This is gonna stay rigid. all these little lines at the bottom and these big ones at the top I do have to cut. I'm just gonna take my scissors for this and I assume that this should be enough for three centimeters so I'm just gonna cut this off and I'm going to cut the rest. Make that bend here which is what we need to go around. You can already see that tapering out so I need to do that with these little bits at the top. What will sit on the rim like so. I'm probably making this hat a little bit big, but that's okay. And then we have that little rim as well to sit underneath. Like I need to cut out another one, but it can sit underneath here. What I need to do now is place it inside here. Let's see how much I need. Up until I don't know about that one. There we go. Just going to glue those together. So I've just put that circle around the the base of the hat, and now I can glue all these bits down. And then what I can do after that is cut that one out as well and glue it here so it doesn't show at all and it's secured inside the two bits. Next thing is um, this needs to be bigger so I thought that it would be the same size but that's that's just silly of me. I kind of want this one to be bigger as well to be honest. So what I might do, ooh, I know that the inside is fine so I can keep that the same that is this one but the outside is going to be different. So I went with two and a half, which is five diameter. And I think that would be a lot better. So not that outer ring, but this outer ring. I'm just gonna cut them out. Okay, now we've got an outer ring of five centimeters and an inner ring of three centimeters. We're going to try this again. <laughs> there we go. There's one on. So let's go ahead and do this one first at the bottom and then we can do the top. Now I've just placed the um, ring that's as big as the base on top. It's very easy. So once the, all these gibbers are bent inside, you just place it in like that. And it kind of holds it in place. And that's mainly because the cardboard is so rigid. But that's a good, that's good. It's, it's a good base. So 
And the only thing I have to do is put glue here to glue that down. And then I can place the other circle on top. So I have this fabric that is really nice for this hat. Then I will glue the hat on to the fabric and then cut around so I can fold it in. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac glue for that. Just gonna glue them down one by one, overlapping each other so you can get that nice crisp edge at the top. So this is the back, so I'm going to start right here. I'll flip it down and pull it tight towards the back. Pull it downwards as well, just so you get that lip there. So we'll do it like this. We'll glue this inside. And then the rim of the hat will curve around. Here we have it. We're nearly done. Um, I just need to put a ribbon around the hat. So I found this, yes, I know, pink ribbon, but I think it goes really well on this hat. And it's it doesn't cover this quite well enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bunch this up and put that just underneath it. So it is. it looks like it's part of that. I've put a few pins in on the side and the 10-6 card. And I think with that, the top hat is done. Let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Through Skillshare, I found this gorgeous class on making paper sunflowers by Eileen Lim. And I can really recommend classes like these when you want to make miniature items. You can just scale down the flowers and have perfect sunflowers like these for your miniature dioramas. Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. It is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. But get this. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Let's get back into the video. Today I will be sculpting prompt 11, which is hair. I've been postponing this for a while because it is not an easy sculpt and I hope I will do it justice. Now I want the hair standing on the table. The first thing I need to do is build him an armature because he will be standing upright. This is going to be built up in phases because I don't have a stand for him to stand on. I will build him up just as is on a piece of glass. I will be starting with armature wire and with some tin foil and then with some cheap clay I will surround the, um, the foil and then bake that just to bulk him out a little bit. And then I will go over that and build the hair with cost clay. So let's get started. So this clay is also polymer clay but if you look at this, how firm it is and this, how soft it is right off the bat. It is not very nice to work with. So this is, I think four or six dollars, Australian dollars at my local Kmart store. And it is just such soft clay. And this is also a little bit sticky. It is just not nice to work with. So I want to use that as just filler for 
figures or sculptures that I'm creating, which it is great for. So first, I have to determine how high the hair is about going to be. I think it should be about this high in total, including ears, because Alice will not be far off from that. Maybe it should be a little bit smaller even. So his legs should be around there. So that's his feet, his knees, outward pointing knees, something like that. He is a rather skinny dude. in here for his arms, the length of his body. He's gonna secure it all with some painter's tape. I've covered his whole body with tape and I have a placeholder here for a skewer for his head. So I'm going to build his head on here and his arms are not really movable and neither are his legs but this is about the position I want him in leaning a little bit forward even again like the bunny it looks like a chicken I'm gonna cook it just kidding this is uh, my armature and this ain't going nowhere so just to start that base a little bit going to add this on, going to leave the skewer in so I know where it goes. I'm just gonna cover this whole thing with this clay and then I'm gonna bake it and then I've got a nice base to work on. I now have a marbled chicken, let's bake him. So the first thing that I want to create is his pants, so let's do that. So I've got his pants done and now I'm just creating his waistcoat. It's gonna indent his buttons with a dotting tool like so. I am going to bake this and then I will be sculpting his jacket and his, his shirt. Now that this is fully baked, I can move on to the jacket sleeves and his collar. I was going to make his coat, but I'm going to bake this first and then I'm going to move on to his arms and then I'm going to move on to his jacket. Let's do his, um, his sleeves. So I just want to put some polymer clay here, just in case you can look inside or see inside his sleeves. It's going to crimp it a little bit this way so it wraps around his arm. There we go and then hang it down. Remember, this will only be his sleeve, so not his actual jacket yet. I'm just going to push that in.
So now I'm just gonna do that on the other side as well. But before I do that, I just want to texture that jacket a little bit with this tool. Now I've got the jacket sleeves on, I'm going to bake him another time and then put his actual coat on. All right, after assembling that jacket on, which I'm really, really happy about, I'm going to bake him upside down like this, mainly because these parts are baked and it will be leaning on that and it won't hurt him. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, his pockets are on, wrinkles are in. I, uh, I think I should just put them in the oven and let them bake. All right, now this is entirely baked. I can move on to his hands, head and feet. Let's start with his feet. Start with equal balls of clay and it's gonna brush some liquid Sculpey on the, on the wires. Looks like he's wearing clogs right now, but we'll get, we'll get there. I just took off as much as I didn't need and now I'm just going to sculpt it into position. Looks pretty good like I thought and I think we need to move on to the second one now. Okay, next up is his hands. So let's sculpt them and then bake them. There's one paw done, need to get on to the other one. And then I can bake him. I've just been scared to sculpt this, mainly because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, so I sculpted his, sculpted his head out of tin foil and it's really pressed firmly together. And I want to do the same with his ears because I just don't want them to break. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover it, position his ears, and then create the actual face and ears with the clay. And ah, I'm just a bit nervous. Anyway, let's go. Okay, let's see where his ears will sit. Somewhere here. It's been on the side of his skull. I prefer using this wire because it's a little bit thicker than your standard uh, or, or tougher than your standard armature wire. This is galvanized. It's just a bit harder to cut. I'm just going to mark up to where the ears go into the head so I don't cover that up. It's a bit of a weird one. It's got, it's kind of pointing weird ways, something like that. I am going to now bulk out his ears and then I'm going to cover up his face and his ears with polymer clay. And I might just run music over that because it requires my concentration. 
Let's go. This is roughly what he will look like, so I'm pretty happy with that. Just making his ears now, so I've rolled out this slab of clay. So I'm gonna press the ear in there. I'm gonna cut another one for both ears. And I'm gonna cut them a little bit wider. And the reason for that is that I can just wrap it around, basically. So the small one goes on the inside, and then the big one goes on the outside. Pressing that firmly. I'm going to thin out the edges a little bit more, kind of joining them together as well. I'll take off a little bit of excess, flattening it out even more, and then curl the edges around. And now I just need to texture that and shape it a, bit, a little bit more. And close that hole that keeps opening up here. There we go, doesn't need to be super neat and tidy because I'm going to texture it. So I'm going to be in, uh, texturing the entire ear like this, except for the inside that I won't texture. So now I can hold his head and smooth it out against his head. I'm happy with the position of his ear. Turn it a little bit. And then texture his whole ear and do the same thing with the other one. And I will also be making a little tail that comes out here uh, before I bake it. And then bake it all together and then he will be ready for painting. Okay, I think he's ready for his final bake. He's got his ears, they're all textured and his little tail, I had to add that as well. And. Um, He's going to go in the oven now.
And this is it for the fourth week of Mini Spooktober. Next week will be the fifth and final video for Mini Spooktober and I really cannot wait to reveal the entire diorama to you all. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Please check out all my other social media in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.